welcome to 190 North. I'm Janet Davies on the Magnificent Mile. And when I say those words, you know exactly where I am. I am on North Michigan Avenue in Chicago. And we are going to explore this street from top to bottom. No, this bustling business district wasn't bustling at all until famed city planner Daniel Burnham laid out his vision. The Burnham Plan uh, of uh, 1909 set out a plan to develop this uh, corridor. First, Pine Street was widened. Then the key component of that plan was this, the double-decker Michigan Avenue Bridge. When it opened in 1920, it paved the way for Burnham's dreams of a boulevard that could rival the world's best. And that really set in motion everything that we know about North Michigan Avenue today. We all know this fixture along the avenue. It's the famed Wrigley Building. Now, when they built the bridge, it actually made one long Michigan Avenue. This was the first structure built on this side in an effort to lure shoppers and businesses to the north side of the river. That was the signal that, yes, it was legitimate to jump the river. And jump they did. A building boom in the 20s brought Chicago, the Tribune Building, and the Drake and Allerton Hotels. The 40s and 50s brought about another revival of sorts. Developer Arthur Rubloff even launched the avenue's famous nickname in a speech back then. He was saying that if his vision was fulfilled, Yes, Chicago would have a magnificent mile. Then, in the 70s, came another building boom. In fact, when the Hancock Center opened at the start of the decade, it held the distinction of tallest building in the world at 100 stories. And Watertower Place became the first vertical mall in history. 70s absolutely took it to another level. Burnham may never have envisioned the skyscrapers and vertical malls of today. But the modern North Michigan Avenue has most certainly gained the world status he dreamed of a century ago. The historic Allerton Hotel on Michigan Avenue. No doubt about it, definitely a landmark in the city. But you know what, maybe the younger set is probably wondering, just what is Tip Top Tap? Postcards and old photos are the only remnants of what was once the Windy City's hottest night spot. It was um, a lounge or a supper club for the after theater crowd. So socialites and Michigan Avenue professionals would gather here. And... These days, the tip top tap is no more. Now the top floor of the famous Allerton Hotel is home to an elegant banquet and wedding ballroom. But back in its heyday, big names like Frank Sinatra and Lucille Ball frequented the Tip Top Tap. The Allerton's popular club was even part of everyone's morning routine via the radio airwaves. In uh, 1933, um, there was a radio show broadcast from this floor on uh, ABC Entertainment um, Breakfast Club with Don McNeil. And it's actually the longest, or was the longest running radio show in the country. The famous lounge served up its last cocktail in 1961, but decades later, the sign bearing its name still remains. It's part of the history of the city. I'm very proud of the sign.